Hey, what's up guys? My name is Matt and today I'm going to be bringing you a video on how to be building a more unique sneaker collection. Let's get right into the video. You might be asking yourself, what is a unique shoe collection? I think the term gets thrown out a lot of unique, 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 and you might be just like, oh, well, I can just create a My Adidas that's completely unique to me. And although that is unique, what I'm talking about is building shoes that are different from what other people might wear on the streets. So that could be an Adidas shoe that you can't see. So that might be an Adidas shoe you've never seen before, might be a Balenciaga shoe you've never seen before, kind of everything in between. So today I have five tips for you on how to build a better sneaker collection that's more unique to your personality and who you are. If you haven't already, I would go check out my first video, which I should have linked in the description below, or it's on my channel, um, and kind of look at how to find these different shoes I might be talking about for cheaper. I've bought a lot of them from there. A lot of the ones you can kind of see back here are just shoes that I've gotten for a lot cheaper than a retail price. As I state in that video, you might see a pair of geo baskets that retail for 1100 but you might be able to get them for under three so knowing this you shouldn't let price be the determinator between you buying that shoe or not now knowing this you know that that retail price shouldn't be that barrier of entry with that shoe and how much you should pay for it it should be the price you can find them for that sales and see how low they can actually go and that's with the worth it value so my first tip and this goes for a lot of the young guys that get in the scene it went for me as well I'm guilty of it. A lot of people getting the scene are guilty of it, but it's just not buying in to hype. So with hype, obviously you get the clout of you own the off-white shoe. Oh, you have that rare Adidas shoe, you have that easy. No, although those shoes might be really cool, really unique, and just a colorway that will make people look at you more. I think some I think sometimes it's actually better to stand out with these other shoes that might not be as hype. So if you've been in the scene at all, you'll know that a price of shoes that you buy for 160, you might be able to resell for 400, 500, for even off-white Jordan 1s, you might be able to sell them for like two grand now, which is crazy. Two grand for a pair of shoes, who spends the money on that, right? Well, the problems I see with that, if you're trying to build a sneaker collection, is if you're spending that $2,000 on a pair of shoes, you're really getting a $160 quality shoe. I think a lot of the times the sneaker industry, people don't want to say it, but the actual quality is never worth that $2,000, it's worth that $160. The only thing that drives that price up is hype. So with knowing all this now, you shouldn't buy in hype, you shouldn't buy into that if you're just trying to build a collection that will last years upon years and you know won't go out of fashion. So one of the shoes I remember Kanye wearing a lot was actually the Balenciaga Arenas. They were a shoe that had a little bit of hype due to Kanye, but not much else beyond that. But it was a shoe that was a sneaker, designer shoe, worth the price tag. At the end of the day, now you can find them for really good prices depending on where you buy them and the condition you buy them in. So if you're ever thinking that silhouette might be played out, maybe it's time to just wait a few years, going back even further in the catalog and seeing other shoes that they made. You might be surprised that some of the shoes you find deep in the catalog, I found a few pairs of Balenciagas that kind of remind me of Jordans, but just higher end Jordans that I am think they're super in now. So my number two tip to give anybody is just finding a designer that you really like. So for me, I really love Represent shoes. I think they're a very good price quality ratio if you can find them on sale. And I don't really think there's many things better than it for the price and the silhouette you can get. But a brand like Rick Owens, a brand like how Gucci find that brand that you really like and can make a bunch of different silhouettes so if you look at back at even Balenciaga they have the arenas they have some neoprene highs they have a lot of different silhouettes beyond the triple s beyond the speed runners beyond a lot of those different shoes that they're coming out with now I think they even have like the big bulky almost looks like an Asics shoe now but it's just finding that designer that you really like and kind of looking at the shoes from there so you might be surprised that some of the older shoes that came out with some of these brands some might be doo-doo and other ones might be really really good so tip number three would be if you're building a collection I would almost avoid getting multiple shoes in just different colorways. It's something I was definitely guilty of. My first two sneakers were both NMDs. The problem became is you're almost pigeonholed into, I have an NMD, I have to fit a certain look, and then it starts to affect your regular wardrobe that way. So my two sneakers after that was a pair of Ultra Boots and another pair of NMDs. So at that point, you have four shoes and only one of them has a different design. Whereas if you had gotten an NMD, a Jordan 1, Ultra Boost, and like a Balenciaga Arena, now you have four different styles that you can wear four different ways and four very different outfits. And also, sometimes it kind of just looks goofy if you have 
20 different colorways of an Air Jordan 1. Although not for me personally, if you do it, that's fine. I would avoid that if you're just starting out so people don't just think you have the same shoe over and over and over and over and over again. So tip number four is I think that every sneaker needs to have a reason why it's in your wardrobe. There's a lot of really cool colorways coming out from both Nike and Adidas, but it's actually fitting those into your wardrobe that is important. You might find a colorway that you're really into, you really love, but if you really look into it, you're probably never gonna wear it because you can't fit it into your wardrobe. I think it's something that might be overlooked. So something like the, the Yibra that I thought was god awful. And you just see people trying to wear it and there's no way in hell that they're able to pull it off because they're wearing a baby blue top, pink jeans, and then yellow shoes. Now that I come to think of that, it might not, that actually might not be the worst combination for that shoe. But you get my point of, if you buy a Yibra, it's gonna be a lot harder to fit into anything in your wardrobe rather than if you bought just a regular Zebra, um, Yeezy, or even something simpler, just like an NMD. And it, and it doesn't have to be Adidas. I'm, I've am i grown fondly of Adidas just because it got me into it. My first shoe I actually almost bought was a fake pair of Mastermind NMDs that I found off DHgate, and I didn't know any better. And I almost bought that pair, but something inside me told me, hey, if someone's selling this for $800, you probably shouldn't buy it for 80. But yeah, if it's if it's a shoe that you really want and you're really gonna make pull it off, go for it. At the end of the day, you're the one in control of your wardrobe and what you put on and what you present yourself as. So tip number five that I have for you for all of the sneaker collections is actually to branch out into sometimes those dressier shoes. I think I'm always surprised that people have 30, 40, 50, 100 pairs of sneakers, but they don't have any good quality dress shoes. They spend all their monies on the hype, or they spend all their money as on the, these, they spend all these money on designer shoes that they end up just not having any dress shoes to wear. Now I'm, I'm somewhat guilty of this. I have a few pairs of dress shoes, I guess if you consider Chelsea Boots dress shoes. I mean, kind of they are. Eh casual dress shoes but buying the dressier style shoes or like sneakers like a chelsea boot um loafer something that you can kind of dress up a bit i think is super important in your collection because you don't want to just be known as a guy that's just gonna wear sneakers everywhere you want to be known as a more stylish person you want to be on the forefront of everything that's why you're buying the expensive sneakers that's why you're buying the expensive clothes is to look good and to stand out a little bit so those are my five tips for building a better sneaker collection and also even just the last tip of finding dressier shoes that aren't necessarily sneakers but would fit really well into your collection. So if you have any tips on how to build a better sneaker collection, please leave them in the comments below. I'll be reading them. Who knows, maybe a noob who's new to the community, new to sneakers will find this video and they'll see your comment will be super helpful as well. Always like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.